blah, 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 blah. Hello, and welcome back to the Words from the Nerds podcast. And we are live once again. I already see NLE is in here, been waiting for us for five minutes. Sorry about that. Had a little, had a little delay, but <laughs> we are here <laughs> and uh, we are going to be drafting the Infinity Saga. And we will be doing this like a regular NFL draft. We got three people here. We're going to decide the order, one, two, and three, and see who gets the first pick and how we go from there. Hello, NLE. I have What's a question. Up? What's, up? What's up? Are we only doing Infinity Saga movies? I thought we were just doing all released Marvel movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah sorry, not Infinity Saga. All released. Sorry about that. Yeah, and NLE will play in the comments. There we go. All right. So if you're listening on audio, we are live. And if you're watching this on replay, what's up? We'll try and notify this. I forgot to post this one, so we probably won't get that much in here. But at least it'll upload straight to YouTube. So if you're listening on audio, it's perfectly fine. You can um, you can listen to this episode. You know, we're going to have some good discussion. Um, and if you want to see our list at the end of the video, you can just pop onto the YouTube and look at it real quick. And so I think we should get started. Let's see who the first pick is going to be. Oh, it's Ben. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. All right. Second pick. Charlie, you ready? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Dang, Okay. Oh, I think I think Aiden got lucky here. I actually I think I do. I'm really not mad at that when, at all. In in like the first stages, getting two picks in a row, that is that is lucky. Oh yeah. That's very lucky. Cam. What okay. is up? Cam. I get to go all first. Right. And with our first pick, Ben, you are on the clock. You have three minutes to decide. I, I mean I know my decision right away. Okay, I'm All just right. gonna I'm just gonna type it. Cheers. Oh, uh, okay. Course. Infinity Interesting. Awards. I mean, I feel like when when you're creating a draft of any kind, you have to go for the heavy hitters first, obviously. And I would say that as a generalization, the most universally loved movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is Infinity War. At least in my opinion, most people hold that in very high regard. I think it's a very strong pick. And even if it's not necessarily my favorite of the MCU films, I think it could lead the team to victory easily. I'm not going to lie. I thought you were going to go with the safe pick of Endgame. Infinity War is a good pick, but Endgame is a heavy hitter as well, in my opinion. Yeah, you know... I. I that's probably what I would have gone with me personally if I were picking first. Not even gonna lie, so I I think I think Ben's making the the big big smart choice here. It, yeah. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Oh, it's films. I thought it was characters in specific films. <laughs> no, no, these are the, doing, the doing MCU movies. movies. All right, and I think that leaves us with Charlie up next. My turn. And just okay. a preface, no, we're not doing we're not doing TV shows, just the movies. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, you know, after much deliberation, I think I've landed on uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier as my Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> Interesting. You probably do just WS, huh? Yeah, oh, there you go. Sorry, it was lagging on my end. Yep. Interesting. Care to elaborate on that? I mean, you know, it's it to this day, it's in a lot of people's uh, list as being it's definitely always in top five. A lot of people still renown it as, uh, you know, their their favorite. So um, it's it's usually I think it's usually in conversation. It's usually between Infinity War and Winter Soldier. So um, I it's kind of like Ben's decision. You know, this was like the safest and strongest pick that I could think of. Uh, to like keep, make sure that I have a place on the board, so you know okay. here we are. That's facts. That's facts. All right, that's a solid pick. I think if you're taking Captain America: Winter Soldier, I think it's only right I take Avengers: Endgame. 
I honestly was not expecting this movie to slip this far. Um, I do have a, I did have a backup in case it did. And I will say it wasn't Winter Soldier, even though that is my favorite MCU movie. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like my, my second pick would have been something different. Uh, just to get to some of these real quick. Got some new faces in here. Plug House. Have you guys heard the rumors about Hayden Christensen playing Nova in Guardians of the Galaxy 3? Oh, I have not. Uh, no. Not what? I have that not. That is not something I've heard about. I feel like no. Hayden Christ- Christensen's a little bit old, huh? To be playing Nova. He's not but that old. How old is he? I don't I'm I think he's like old. 42. 42. Okay. Wait. Yeah. 42, well, how, 41. How old, what's, uh, how old is Nova typically? Because not Honestly, like age Nova, obviously. I'm not sure, actually. Richard Ryder, I think he's an older. He's older, right? So maybe it would work. I, I like, I mean, I was hearing all the rumors of Ryan Gosling, too. So. Oh, yeah, he is. He wants to, I know he wants to play Ghost Rider. That'd be sick. I kind of want, I don't know. Norman Reedus would be cool. Cam Foss coming in with the freezing or burning hot takes. Not gonna lie. <laughs> freezing takes. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm off today. I know Mans wasn't roasting my list yesterday, and he's going to come up with something like wow. that. Come on now. Perfect casting. I wonder if this is in regards to our Fantastic Four episode. No, I think he's referring to the Hayden Christensen rumor. Oh, perfect casting. Oh, you're right. You're yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I got a little bit. Selfish right there. All right. So for my second pick, <laughs> um, this is a hard one. This is a very hard one, but I think I'm going to have to go with Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm. I want the heavy hitters. I want the dub at the end of the day. You get Endgame and No Way Home. I think that's a, a solid choice right there. A solid back-to-back pick. Okay. It okay. is. Yeah, it is, those are those are two heavy hitters. Big, big <laughs> ensemble, big ensemble pick. I expected okay. these four as the first four that were picked. I, I is, definitely honestly, didn't. I didn't even think about No Way Home for some reason. Like that just wasn't something that crossed my mind. I don't know why. I, I still I would have picked Winter Soldier first still anyway. But yeah. Um. So for my second pick. Wait, wait. Are we? How how does this work? Yeah, it's back, to, it's, it's back to Charlie, and then Ben, you get two picks. Oh, two okay, picks. okay. Yeah, I, I've never done. I've never done yeah. this, so I'm just just making I'm, sure. Yeah, I've never done it either. Um, <clears throat> I don't miss with my takes like you, Charlie. Cam, get you. <laughs> oh, I swear, man. I swear. Um, my second pick. You know, I, I think as much as it's it's kind of a little bit of a step down but it's still it kind of falls into that ensemble thing i think we know where i'm going captain america civil war yeah that's definitely where i that that was my backup in case infinity war and endgame were taken <clears throat> yeah i'm kind of mad but you have both you have two captain america movies i got two cap movies bro give so, me I all mean, from right. the, from the directors yeah. of cherry and the gray man you can't uh, really argue hey we're them. talking about the quality of these movies now <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, that's those are those are two great picks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, real quick, Plughouse says that Ryan Gosling and Hayden Christian are the same age. Then okay, uh, okay. I, I I feel like I need to see a little bit more of Hayden Christensen's acting, which is ultimately on me. I, I haven't seen anything else he's in other than what he was in Star Wars. Not to say he was bad, but you know, I'd like to see a little bit more. I like the he, Doctor he Doom room. Kind of bad though. Let's be honest. Yeah, there was some <laughs> rough. There was some rough spots in episode two. So I get two picks now. Yeah. So now you get two picks, and then it's Charlie again, and then I get two picks, Charlie. So. So Charlie's getting screwed. He's actually he's actually getting the getting it pretty good because he he remains a constant. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> for my for my number two, I'm going Thor Ragnarok. Wow, mm. okay. Still easily mm. the best Thor movie. For me, I think it's one of the re- most rewatchable Marvel films. And I, I again, I think it's one of those like universally pretty loved movies. I don't hear a lot of like controversy behind it. Most people really enjoy it. I still think it's one of the funnier Marvel films. Taika Waititi's a great director. I think it's another pretty safe, 
safe bet, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. All right, man. Yeah. I feel like Ben's putting together a pretty good list. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, he did get the thing. first pick though, so good thing I get a go again. I know, dude. <laughs> you guys, you guys better know what I'm about to put here. I think I do. What What am I about to put? I don't want to say it because if you and Charlie don't take it, then I'm taking it for sure. <laughs> You're not taking it. <laughs> what is it? Oh, dude, that's what I was gonna put. Yeah, next, that's man. that's what that's what I was gonna put. You're not oh, taking geez. my boy, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume One, not Volume Two. He's a hater of the second. Heck one, no, guys. heck no. But let, let's be honest. This is James Gunn's best superhero project to date. It, it's it's the best one that he's done. Sure, he's made some good stuff. You know, the Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, we won't talk about Guardians 2. But this is his baby. This is his child. And he did it best in this movie, in my opinion. The Guardians is such a great team. So fun. I love all the casting picks. Such a funny Marvel movie. Soundtrack is arguably the best out of any Marvel film. It's an amazing movie. And again, it's a safe pick. It's universally loved. That's all I, I wasn't. I wasn't expecting you to pick that one. I what was like, I hope they I hold up. Pick? Um, I don't know, but not Guardians, to be honest. Hmm. Uh, okay. Real quick, Samuel Miller, what's up, man? I don't think we've seen Samuel in here. So, hello, welcome to the stream. He says, it makes sense. Hayden was fantastic in the Obi-Wan show. So, Marvel probably wanted him after that. He was fantastic in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. And I think Hayden's a good actor. If you put... And I. If What's you up? put something, if you put something over his face, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's beautiful though, so you can't really put, you can't cover That's... up that man's face like that. <laughs> uh, watch Jumper. Hayden was brilliant there. All right. Have any of y'all watched that? No. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I've seen it, but it's just been a while. Okay. Guardian sweep. And NLE says the disrespect on Black Panther. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, Charlie is up next. Oh wow! Okay, I've been trying to sit here and think about it. Um, and like, are they locked in? Like, as soon as we say them, or like, um, um yeah, or like, why you like to move them around or to change your pick? Like, like if I say one and then I'm like, oh wait, 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 I like as soon as I say it, like I think of something else. If you change it, yeah, you. I mean, that's fine. okay. Just making sure, making sure. Okay, because I'm not gonna do that right now. At least I don't plan on doing that. But just making sure, like, if I slip up and say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to put Thor the Dark World. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, 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 no. All right. Hey, okay, no. Iron, Man Iron, Man Iron, Man Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1. Iron Man 1. Yes, that's a solid. Yes, that's a very solid pick. Um, you know, I mean, as much as, like, you, you got to give it its respect. It gave us what we have now, obviously. Um, and it's even beside that, it's still uh, pretty well-renowned. I don't know if it still makes people's, like, I think it's in everybody's top ten list for sure. I don't. It, it's not. It's not no longer in the top five, which I think is good. That just speaks to the test. It's a testament to how good the MCU is now. Um, but it's still a very solid pick of a movie. I think. I mean, people. I don't, I've never heard anybody say it's trash. Like as much as like six months later, we'll have people saying that the movies we just watched are garbage. We nobody comes back and says the Iron Man was garbage. At least that I've seen. So, yeah, I think uh, I think this is a good one to get me uh, through. I will say, Charlie, after like our live stream yesterday, I'm starting to see you're going with a lot of the character movies, like with a lot yes, of character sir. and character building in them. So like I'm starting to see that like we have we both have Avengers movies and then like Ragnarok is fun, but like there's a lot of characters in it as well. Same with like Guardians is a good character movie as well. That's why I was going to do Guardians, but then they yeah. had to come in and like snatch. It's I crazy. could definitely. I'm starting to learn a lot about my boy Charlie here. So, <clears throat> all right. I guess I'm up next, huh? I have back to back picks. So, I mean, I have one pick in mind. Second one, I'm kind of iffy on. So, I'll just go with the first one. And that is the first Avengers movie. Um, can't go wrong with this one. It's a, it's a classic. First time we got to see a big team up like this, a culmination of however much films we had at the moment. And to see it all pay off and, you know, looking back on it, is Loki the most threatening villain? Eh, but you already have the stepping stones for Thanos in there. And everything about that, this sets this sets like the stage for how Thanos even knows about Tony in Infinity War. So it's a very good movie. And it does a lot more than you think. Um, 
I watched this movie in theaters and I always I always say I remember this was the first time I like my memory I have horrible memory by the way so like th this is the like furthest memory I could think where I actually saw a crazy reaction in theaters and it was when Hulk picks up Loki and smacks him around there was people standing up and cheering and like laughing laughing and clapping it was just great and I remember I was just like oh this is cool you know so uh Avengers movie can't go wrong with that so, that was the first movie that I had like an applause after the movie was over. Oh, wow. That's the first movie that the entire theater just started clapping. And I was like, this is crazy. This is cool. Obviously, it's a classic, bro. Like, I'm I'm gonna tell I'm gonna show this movie to my kids, you know. Obviously, all the other ones, but this is yeah, like I was gonna say, I'm showing the entire MCU. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm gonna show them the entire MCU, but like this is the like this was like our first step into what the MCU could actually do and where you know places we can go with the mcu and everything which leads me to my second pick that i was kind of skeptical on but you know what i love this movie i don't care who doesn't love this movie guardians of the galaxy volume two oh, dang. and dang. i know ben is gonna be like oh this is a horrible pick let's go <laughs> no it's not guardians is peak ben I'm actually oh, glad. Geez. I thought you were gonna say something else, so it does make me glad that this is ah. what you chose. I feel like I know what you think I was gonna say, and yeah, I was struggling with this one because I was like, you know what? When we post this, I know a lot of people feel the same way about Volume Two, so I wanted to go with like a really safe pick. But I was like, you know what? A lot of people love Volume Two. I love Volume Two. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and Elise says, <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, to think that is it that Zack Snyder did this film? We talking about Avengers one? <laughs> I think he means Joss Whedon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if he does mean Joss Whedon, yeah, that's to think that Joss Whedon did this film. Yeah, yeah that's true. Mr. Ah, Charles, geez, I don't know. I'm really trying. I'm like, ah, this is. I feel like this is a critical. This is a turning point here because after this. Ben's two choices are just uh, are really going to change the list. I feel like, the, and, and what we have left. So I want to try and steal something from him now. Um, <laughs> ah, jeez, man. I'm I know what I want. Here. Yeah, I know you know what you want. You get two too. So <laughs> I know. You know I know what I want. You're so mm. lucky right now. I'm trying to think of everything that we had. You know what? I'm going to go with Black Panther. Yeah. I'm going to go with Black Panther. Solid it choice. Between that and something else, I'm not going to say what the other thing is, just in case Ben doesn't say it. Avengers um, Age of Ultron. But, uh, you know. Or Captain Marvel. No. <laughs> you trying to <laughs> persuade me. <laughs> you know, I, I think um, for as much as, like, uh, this movie, it's not – it's not perfect. I think looking back, like it, it has its issues. Obviously, that CGI thing, we're, we're never going <laughs> to forget Let about that. that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what everybody points to when they want to make fun of MCU CGI. Well, and now She-Hulk, I guess. But they've, they've improved that, I think. But um, I think this does a beautiful job of showing us uh, the culture of Wakanda and, and really ingraining you with it. I mean, this movie had everybody and their mother saying Wakanda forever for the rest of the year, you know? Like it's a, uh, it's quite a, quite a cultural phenomenon. And uh, I don't want to say it's like, it's even cement, it's cemented even more due to Chadwick's passing. Um, but it's just. In a way, in a way it, it like, I don't know. I can't watch this movie without crying. Yeah. It's going to be treasured more because like, this is like yeah. the one true movie we got of with him and his like full performance of T'Challa. Yeah. Um, and I, even aside from that, I think like the motivations for Killmonger were, were great and they were understandable. Just obviously the way he went about them were, was, was horrible. Um, but, uh, and then just like the struggle with T'Challa realizing like his nation, his family, really his the Royal family were doing things wrong and like, just not, um, not caring for people on the outside, you know, um, like that. And I feel like that's a really cool struggle. Um, but just overall, I think it was, it was, it's, it's pretty well renowned. So I, I don't think it's a quite safe option, but it's still a really good option for, for number four. It is. Yeah. It's, it's uh, I, um, I was actually seeing earlier cause there was this, this guy on TikTok where he was like, 
let's all wear white to Wakanda forever. And everyone was like, yeah, let's wear our hoods too while we're at it. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I saw someone stitch him with that. And he was like, it, it was um, King and Queen Lion. And he was, he was going on and on, but, uh, but he was showing pictures and he was like, Oh, don't worry. Like, you know, we know what to show up and, you know, we, we know what to wear. And it was a whole bunch of like, it was groups of all these black people wearing their African stuff, wearing this cold, like just representing all this culture. But there was even a picture where it says everyone's showing out for the Black Panther movie. And they they were handing out um, styrofoam plates like a cookout. They were having a cookout in the theater. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, it's just it's just amazing. Like, you know, how, how everyone took this movie and how much it impacted everyone. And um, especially now that like Chadwick's gone and I, I even saw like LeBron talking about it earlier. Uh, I saw a video. He said, we lost the Black Panther and the Black Mamba in the same year. And, you know, this is like the, the shittiest year ever. Um, and he was just talking about like, you know, we finally had our superhero, our black superhero up there. And so, um, yeah, it's it's definitely like a. Uh, a standout movie you know especially on rewatch and and everything about it 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 means a lot to a lot of people which is beautiful yeah yeah i was i was high on it after i left the theater i loved it the first time around i don't think it's aged super well with me i've definitely come down on it a little bit but i still think it's a it's a great movie i don't think it deserves to be the highest rated on like imdb rotten tomatoes and everywhere else where it's number one for marvel i don't really yeah. get that but yeah. it's 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 a really great pick yeah <sighs> benjamin I'm, I'm going through a personal conflict for my second choice i know i know my next one my number four is shang chi oh no no i was hoping <laughs> y'all were sleeping on that one no See, Aiden, I honestly thought you were gonna say Shang Chi as your number four. I, I like kind of I, honestly, I like Guardians two more than Shang Chi. So, I'm so <laughs> this Shang Chi for me was like the most surprising Marvel film in a long time. The time where I had nothing to base it off of. I had no understanding of what the story was gonna be about. No prior connection to any of the characters. I just went in thinking it's another Marvel movie. You know, I had just went to go see Black Widow a few months back and that wasn't very good. So how was I supposed to have expectations about something that I didn't know anything about? And it blew me away. I loved this movie. I've watched it even like two times since it came out and it's phenomenal. Still has the best action in any Marvel project period. I'll say Marvel's cinematic universe project. I won't talk about any of the other, you know, non MCU Marvel shows or movies or anything like that. When it comes to MCU projects, best choreographed action, just like one of the best introductions to any character, in my opinion. Simu Liu is great. It's a great movie. I love it so much. Um, I actually have a story for this one, too. And I know I keep buttoning in with stories. I'm trying to fill our time out so it's not like a 30-minute episode. So bear with me. Um, so my girlfriend came over for my birthday, right? She came down, and we were hanging out, chilling, and then – we kind of didn't have any plans for the rest of the week. And so I was like, um, oh, Troy, bro, you you don't have to, bro. It's fine. I don't know why you can't, but no, you're all good, bro. You being here is enough, you know. And Dobin, Dobin. what's up, man? It's been we're, going good, man. Abe's list is trash. Ben's list is trash. <laughs> dude, okay. I was just <laughs> about to say, <laughs> dude. I was just about to say we're all we're all doing good. We're not we haven't fought yet. We're all chilling, being friendly. I was just gonna say that and you cut me off to say that. Oh my god. Um uh anyway, so she came down, we didn't have any plans, and then I looked, I uh, um her brother in law sent me something and it said Shung Shi will be doing um fan screenings tomorrow. Like they gave us a day's notice, and I was like, What? And I was like, Tomorrow's my birthday. And I was like, Oh my gosh, we have to go. Like this is this is insane and he was like he was like dude to my knowledge they've i can't remember the last time they've done it this early like a day's notice is crazy and i was like maddie bro this is destiny we have to go watch this movie like it's on my birthday <laughs> they're giving us a day's notice we have to go so um i wasn't posting at the time but we drove like an hour out and we went and we got to see shang chi like a whole month early and i walked out and i i was like i was like man you know what it feels kind of weird coming out of a marvel movie that 
like half because I think they only did it in 25 theaters across America. As like it comes, it feels weird coming out of a Marvel movie that like you know 50 percent of people haven't seen. <laughs> I was like, but you know what? I really like that. And I was like, I was like, I enjoyed this movie a lot. I thought it was beautiful. Like it was amazing. And that is probably the, my like favorite birthday memory ever. Just like one like last second notice getting an early screening to Shang Chi a month early. Hell yeah. Should have been making content back then, bro. We would like have all the spoilers up on the screen. Spoiler oh, for everybody. Yeah. Uh oh. Oh, hi, Will. I was I was kicking this guy's uh, ass in uh, multiverses <laughs> before we came on. Willy Poo. Someone keeps on changing my Disney Plus profile to the Red Panda from Attorney. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, Troyer. Charlie. All right. Dude, thanks. I just want to hold on. Before we continue, I just want to say, Troyer, I went, I, I looked at Troyer's video of like his, he posted the list thing yesterday. I was looking at the comments. All of them were for Ben pretty much. There was like a couple for me. And then, but then I go to all of our videos on mine he's like i think list two is best i go to ben's he's like i think i really like list three i go to aiden's and he said list one is just banging out the part i was like dude, Charlie, dude. You fake ass. <laughs> oh man got literally, love literally getting zero oh my god ignore that kid time to <laughs> oh my i actually can that's what's funny i guess <laughs> i'm talking about but i'm not going to I timed, uh, out Bre- I, I timed out Brendan, and I still don't he's know. Never been he back. hasn't been back. <laughs> he's in the back rooms right now. He is. <laughs> All right, Top G. Come on. Oh, <laughs> I'll be honest. This has been the hardest. I've, I've been going through a mental battle trying to figure out which film that I want to pick because I know that there's one that's more universally loved, but I have mine that I think is just better. It's tough. Because I know I'm gonna give the other one to to one of you guys here, so I have to make up my mind. I I gotta go with my gut. Oh wow! Listen, wait, which one is it? I know that's that's he's the dilemma. trying to pick. He's trying to pick. <laughs> that's the dilemma between Homecoming and Far From Home because a lot of people think Homecoming is better, so it would get me more fan votes. But I've always been a simp for Far From Home. Yes. Wow. My next is is homecoming. Just put it on the list now. My next is homecoming. Benjamin. Uh, I I don't feel like it. <laughs> no. no. Okay. So I don't I don't know what it is because I remember going to watch Far From Home in theaters, and immediately after everybody came out of the theater, I heard people talking about it, and they were speaking so highly on the film. Mainly because after Endgame, there was all those people saying, oh, Marvel's done for. And this was the first movie that we get. And everyone was saying, that was really dang good. And I don't know what's happened over the last three years because now I mostly see people hating on it. I don't know where that came from. Ever since I watched it, I've always loved it. And every single time I rewatch it, I still love it. And like I've made videos talking about how I think a lot of the criticisms are very misunderstood within the marvel universe and they actually make a lot more sense than people give it credit for and in almost every other aspect i think it's a better movie than homecoming action scenes humor characters location like villain everything i love everything about far from home better than homecoming i I gotta stick with my gut i mean i know i'm giving you homecoming and that will give you like a fan vote but i'm sticking with my baby Okay. I think most of the criticism from Far From Home comes from what it did to Spider-Man. Just Spider-Man fans, fanboys. I say fanboys, but I'm one of them. So I was like, there's a lot of things wrong with how they did Spider-Man himself in this movie. But I think overall as a movie, it still, it it does a good job. I think it's a good villain. I think it's a compelling villain. Um, It's just like the fact that it's always based around Tony Stark. Most of his villains are just gets kind of repetitive and annoying. Um, But again, that's all just like um, Spider-Man specific type talk. But I think you're, I think you're right. Like it's, it's especially coming out of the movie there. Like that was um, everybody loved it. Like it had brought JK Simmons back in the post credit scene. Like that was crazy. That was huge. Um, And then like the, the turmoil that Peter had with the spider sense, getting to see that, um, in the MCU for the first time, him use his spider sense. That was awesome. The Mysterio stuff was really, really great, especially that uh, original sequence um, before before the, the climax um, was really, really well done. And uh, 
you know, there's there's little things like why would he give his give the glasses to a guy he barely met? And like there's ex- explanations like he's a kid, like he doesn't really like he wouldn't really uh and he just lost about Tony it too much. Yeah, Sorry to cut you off, just, yeah. No, no, you're right. No, yeah. And he just lost Tony Stark and he's like thinking about all this baggage that he's he might have to take on and then he doesn't want to take that on so he wants to give it to somebody else type thing and if you think about it like that it's actually really compelling um like i've had conversations with people that have made me um like it for movie reasons but other than spider-man reasons you know so um but yeah i think that's a i think it's a solid pick but, yeah. i wanted to add one one more thing i wanted to just say i still think that far from home's post credit scene is the best post credit scene in the entire mcu yeah I, I I would actually agree with that. I think I have I have thought that since it came out because it blew my mind, and like the anticipation of waiting years to see that come to fruition, and obviously what it turned out to do in No Way Home. I love it. Whoa! It, real quick, we got sixteen people in here. Shout hmm. out to every single one of y'all. This is insane because yesterday we only had I posted on my story and we still maintain like about seven or eight. So to yeah. see 16, 15, 13 in here, I appreciate every single one of y'all watching. Thank y'all. Sorry, but go ahead. Uh, I'm just thinking like I'm trying to think if there's something better, but I think you're right. I think you're right. Cause I, I mean, yeah, that that moment, just like Peter Parker is Spider-Man, like that was like world changing life changing like that's like we've never seen that before and then like the from that moment i wanted the next film and it obviously we had to wait so so long um but and i do agree though like what it ended up leading to was absolutely amazing which is why it's number two on aiden's list but um no i i guess you know for now i'll agree with you that uh, okay. it has the best uh, best post credit scene in the entire MCU. Um, but to explain my pick, I guess, Homecoming, I think I've seen some people say like it's not a good Spider-Man movie, but like I feel like it captures the essence of Spider-Man as a carefree kid and him wanting to be Spider-Man. Granted, I know in the comics there's a lot of instances in which like he hates being Spider-Man, but he does it because he knows he needs to. But this is him early on in his career. He loves being Spider-Man. This is his escape from all the monotony of his regular everyday life, you know? And so this is like the escape that he needs. And I, I feel like they could have played into it a little bit better. Sure. Like if they had incorporated like some uncle Ben stuff, imagine like he's using this to like escape from that. Like that's even another instance that they could have uh, expanded that upon, but I'm not here to talk about what they could have done better because what they did in the film was great. I think the vulture stuff was absolutely phenomenal. And that reveal, I never saw it coming. That was, st- that's still one of like top tier MCU stuff for me. Like I can't, I, I don't know why I never saw it coming. I guess they didn't, I don't know if they really teased it too much um, to my knowledge. I'd have to rewatch the film, but just that moment when he opens the door and then just his face drops, it's like, dude, that, that is so good. And then the cars, the, t- the scene in the car, you're like, Liz, please shut up. Please shut up. Please shut up. It's so good. Everything about like, I love homecoming so, so much. And I just, and that's like the thing for me is like going, going into that, going from loving homecoming so much. And then for me to fall off of far from home spider-man wise because i think homecoming what it did with spider-man was much better than what it did with spider-man and far from home but again i still think far from home is a good movie uh just a good good film wise so it, it was a little bit heartbreaking for me but homecoming is absolutely incredible i think uh as a spider-man film i remember there was people talking about back when that movie came out it's better than spider-man 2 and like i never quite agreed with that but you know it, like there's people saying that so yeah. Hold on. What's the other... <laughs> Charlie? Everyone like the video and share. Yes, everybody like the video if, if you can. Everybody Shout drop out a like if you're out here. Yeah. Shout out to NLE. We appreciate y'all. Homecoming is in my top five Spider Man movies. Yes, 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 yes. Respectable. Exactly. Respectable. Charlie got a little message from Charlie. 513 gets it. Uh, <laughs> and another Char- man, Charlie getting the love today. Damn. Charles. Oh, who this list this? makes you guys happy, huh? Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess it's my turn. Uh, I, I actually do agree. I will say um, the um, Mysterio scene in Far From Home and the scene in the car in Spider-Man Homecoming where uh, Adrian Toomes realizes Spider-Man's Peter Parker, those two scenes, and then you can even add in the three uh, Spider-Man uh, swinging 
those are all in Spider-Man movies, and those are some of the best MCU moments. Like, or, or even just like film-wise, like that scene of him in the car. Oh, that is like so yeah. tense, bro. It's like Liz sh- sh- for one second, exactly. show us, bro, please. Exactly. Um, and then yeah, the whole Mysterio sequence. I remember watching that, and I was like, "What am I watching, bro?" It, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, that was childhood come to like that was like spectacular Spider-Man. I'm like watching it live action now. Oh, like it's yeah. crazy. I'm a Charlie. I'm a Charlie Stan. Stan. We're all Charlie fans. That's what's up. Charlie, hey, get Will out of here for real though. Like let's let's kick him out. Sean Chi better than Homecoming. Whoa, I mean he's not wrong, is. I guess. No. Yeah, he's not wrong. But Wait, what like, are you talking I, about? I let's guarantee kick, tra- kick Charlie. What the hell? I know <laughs> I get I but like look what he said. Like I he's just saying it because it's on Ben's list. That's the only reason he's saying it. Uh, I have a bet okay, so I have a better list. You're just mad. <laughs> mm. mm-hmm. okay 5 13 we all know yeah. secret wars carried you today guys just spoiler alert for how we posted the thing okay ben won ben won ben's list he won lands with us. Is that what i guarantee here, though everybody on tiktok was just scrolling through they looked at dude you know the funny thing is my dad has a tiktok he commented on mine he said three i was like bro <laughs> You got me tripping. Let's go. What is, like, what? This is crazy. No way. But I guarantee everybody just look. Secret Wars at the top? Three. Three. I did say, so I saw somebody on Ben's post, though. They were like, pain is just, two is just painful to look at. I was like, God, <laughs> oh, no. Come on, bro. I even got Charles, Papa Charles on my team. <laughs> Let's bro, go. That's like, oh, oh, my, my God. God. Papa Charles. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. Uh, five thirteen IO dope username says Tom Holland is the best Peter Parker. He acts and looks like a teen. Love rewatching the movie for um, for the Peter Parker scenes, not only the Spider Man scenes. I agree, Tom Holland, yeah, greatest Peter, Peter Parker, Parker, my Peter Parker, my Spider Man, best Spider Man. Charlie carrying Charlie over fiction. <laughs> uh, I'm more hyped for Blade. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't here last night. <laughs> oh man. Everyone is saying Ben's because Troyer literally commented three <laughs> on Ben's. <laughs> oh, dude. Troyer kills me, bro. Brings the comedy. Uh, I guess it's my turn, huh? Is. This is tough, man. This is really tough. But I feel like since y'all went with the Spider-Man's, I think it's only right I go with Doctor Strange. The first Doctor Strange movie. Solid film overall. Introduced some insane things into the MCU. Some of those sequences, like we were just talking about, are some of the best in the MCU. Is the whole Inception. Him getting touched on the forehead and zooming out. Touching the butterfly and then zooming all the way back. Um, absolute peak visuals in there. Um, on top of it just being a good film. I will agree with some people, though, that Doctor Strange... He doesn't really go through much like development sometimes. He kind of still s- seems like he's uh, he, and he's stubborn. That's his character, you know, and everything we saw explored in Multiverse of Madness about how he always has to be the one holding the knife or something like that. He always has to be the one in charge, basically. Um, but they wrap that up beautifully whenever he turns to America and, and instead of taking charge, and taking control of the situation and taking her powers from her, he gives her the nod and says, you know, I, I trust in you. I think you can do it. So I think it's beautiful. I think the doc- first Doctor Strange movie is is great. And so I will go with that. I'm just laughing because he said he put first Doctor Strange on there and he just starts talking about the sequel. Yeah. Like, he's like talking oh. about the character development. He's, he's grasping at straws. Oh, to... get out of here. <laughs> you know it's a good movie too. I was, no, I, first I, one, yeah, 100%. Oh, yeah, come yeah. on now. Now you're just hurting me. I, I, I brought that up because I said while he didn't have any character development in that movie, it pushed him along to where he could get it in Multiverse of Madness. So, I'm kicking Charlie out of the chat, out of the stream. So, <laughs> you can't say that. 513 just said, I like Charlie's team. That's what's up. Look uh, at that. Represent. Okay. Okay. But we got we got some love for Ben as well and no love for me. So, oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's like them comments. He's going to display his own me. comment. <laughs> oh, there we go. Aiden H Talks. Thank you so much, bro. <laughs> yes, Morbius. Avengers, it's Morbin time. <laughs> the Avengers versus Morbius. All right, my second pick. 
this is where it kind of gets tough. Um, but you know what? I feel like I kind of have to do it and go with Avengers Age of Ultron. Mm. Oh my God. As soon as I Underrated. finish that, he says Aiden <laughs> is trying too hard with the Avengers movies. <laughs> Avengers movies are going to carry my team though. Watch. I Watch. Guardians. The I feel like Avengers that's the popular Endgame. opinion now, or it's becoming the popular opinion. I guess it can't yeah. really be the popular I, opinion because it's uh, people are saying it's underrated. And if that was the popular opinion, it wouldn't be underrated. Sorry. I, no, continue. you're good. I, I just, I've never understood the hate for this movie. I, even, even like, you know, watching it and rewatching it again, I'm like, I don't find anything wrong. And I don't even take the, what is it? To do? <laughs> yeah. Dude, look at the choices up here. Like what, what do I have left? What do you want me to choose? Iron Man 2 or 3, Thor 1, like what are <laughs> Ant-Man and the Wasp? No, I'm picking Avengers Age of Ultron. Um, I think if Shang-Chi was number one on Aiden's list, I'd vote for Avengers. <laughs> hey, Will really loves Shang-Chi. Um, no, I've just never understood the hate for Age of Ultron. I think it's it's a fun movie. It's it's funny. Um, I think it has one of the dopish fight shots in all of like, you know, besides Endgame. It's like one of when they're all like fighting and just spinning around and the camera's just moving around them and they're all going in slow motion. You see them all fighting. You even see a point where Vision uses the Mind Stone. Thor uses his hammer. And I think um, Iron Man uses his arc reactor. And it's just three lasers. It's some of the coolest stuff. It's a fun movie. It, it gives us a lot more chemistry between the Avengers. Sets up some absolutely insane stuff that's still affecting the MCU today. Um so yeah i don't get the hate on age of ultron and I, do i care that the avengers are carrying my list no i don't <laughs> i got spider-man no way home up there guardians volume 2 dr strange my list is peak i don't care what no one says <laughs> because no okay. one is saying anything about it please someone please comment that my list is good <laughs> to be honest iron man kind of mid troyer 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 oh, troyer, troyer. Age of Ultron Charlie. was goaded. Could argue it set up everyone's character arc. Are you what? This one I'm talking about, guys. This will honestly. Kid? Okay, Aiden. Aiden, I want you to tread carefully, very like very carefully right now. Let me think. Let me think. About let say. me think. Let me think. Because it did do a lot for the whole Black Widow and Hulk thing and Hulk battling with like Bruce Banner. <laughs> I'll let you finish. But did it not? Did it not do it? Like, not not Bru not Black Widow and Hulk. Uh, I'll but you, I'll Hulk finished battling with Bruce Banner. I'm still trying to think. I don't know. <laughs> um, It set the scenes for your second movie on your list, Civil War. You know, we see Tony go through um everything with Sokovia and realizes, you know what? Maybe I need some check put on me. And then in Winter Soldier, <laughs> we see Captain America be like, no, maybe governments aren't easy to trust. Without Age of Ultron, you don't get that conflict. What so are you talking I, I about? That. I think you well, get that with Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, that okay. Was and and, and uh, what do you? And so what's what's Tony's argument for Civil War about okay, how he needs but, he needs? What, but no, and where do you get that from in Civil and in, uh, in uh, Winter Soldier? Where do you but, get Tony's argument? But, from? But here's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the comment said that Age of Ultron set it up. Winter Soldier set up that arc for Cap. Not yeah, Age of Ultron. That's, that's what I said, but Age of Ultron set that up for Iron Man. Because I was going through, I said Hulk, and then I said Iron Man. You don't get that. You don't get his side of the story like set up for Civil War without Age I of Ultron. I think there's multiple for Iron Man, though. I don't think it's just Age of Ultron. But that, that was, was a big a, one. A, that was a big one, sure, because he created Ultron. But, like, I mean, I, I imagine just him watching all this pain happening. Tony's just very susceptible. I don't think that's, I don't think I said that right, but susceptible um, to, like, that kind of uh, pushback from the government because he's realizing he like he's emotional about all the stuff that all the collateral collateral damage that has been caused like in Avengers one per se. Um, granted that wasn't their fault. And a lot of, and, and still I think, think, think the good point that people bring up is like, well, they were going to nuke New York if, if Tony didn't do something, you know, but um, I, I would argue that like age of Ultron isn't that important to Tony's side in civil war. I do think it plays a factor. I do think it plays a factor. Okay. This is why but... I think it's I, I, I agree. It, it, it plays a factor. I think it plays a bigger factor than you're than you're saying right now. Because he yeah, he created <laughs> Ultron. <laughs> just... Bro, he created Ultron. Okay. Ultron damn near 
nuked the whole world as well. Without that, what is Tony going off of in Civil War? Besides, yeah, we do need some checks put on us because look what I just did. Um, that's why I think it's so big because you don't. But get, like, like, why? In- but why? Hold on, that example is poor because like we need checks put on all of us because I made a, a murder robot. Like, how well, does that and, make and, sense? and well, because he sees Juan to do the same thing at the beginning of the movie bombing the whole like united Na- or um bombing well, yeah the and whole, so um, but that doesn't speak to age of ultron that speaks to civil war at that at that point but it's also what tony what tony went through in age of ultron that brings him to that conclusion no, to yeah, be like I, you know I, what I, maybe we do need to get checks put on us and i concur i think that's definitely a factor but it's uh, i think i think you could have that without aid of age of ultron specifically I think you could have that without Agent Well, Ultron. I mean, we can all agree that Captain America Civil War is basically the Avengers 2 that, you know, Age of Ultron was kind of just like that alley ooh. So I'm not saying that we absolutely need it. I'm saying I see where Will was coming from when the like in Tony's like aspect. Not all Will... of them. Not all of them. Like I, that's what I was trying to think of and I was like, well Tony maybe because of how big Age of Ultron was for him and and Civil War. Wait, you know what he, I mean? just, he said the last battle of Age of Ultron has repercussions many, many, many movies down the line. What? So, okay, are you talking about Civil War? That's the that's like the only thing. What what other repercussions does the final battle of Age of Ultron have? Charlie's the team is bad because battle. Iron Man. Aiden's team is bad because of only Avengers. Ben's team is bad because <laughs> of Shang Chi. <laughs> hey, I what? I appreciate it. Five thirteen IO is coming in with the with the. The, the true criticism i uh, respect it so See, look, will I said mean, that original co- comment though i thought he was saying like overall and, and i'm like and that does not he set was. Up. tony's thing set up was set up way before that the whole like in avengers one like we talked about yesterday yeah, yeah, yeah. in avengers one and with iron man one this is this is kind of where i saw it from right because after age of ultron and then they lead into civil war right and you have Cap, who just witnessed Hydra, and Tony, who just witnessed Ultron, right? Which brings them to, you know, their conflict head to head, which ultimately separates them for when Thanos comes in and catches them off guard and wins in Infinity War. It's because of what happened in Civil War, which was also set up in part, in part by Age of Ultron. Okay. So to go as far as saying essential for Endgame, I mean, look, this is the thing. You could have, I agree with what, what you're saying, Charlie. You could have done this in a different movie or you could have done this in a different way. You know, it did. It's like you, don't, you didn't really have to do this in Ultron. Um, I'm just saying for what they did, for what we have and what they did give us, it is pretty important for Civil War and Civil War is important for Infinity War, which is important to like the whole saga. You know what I mean? And Endgame. That's that's where I was probably <laughs> better fighting. Oh, this is actually a really good conversation. No, like it's yeah, a really no, good conversation. Yeah. I I'm not saying I agree with that it's for everybody's character development, but for Tony at least, I think Age of Ultron is a nice alley oop. As far as that uh, that last thing I'm gonna say, as far as that Black Widow and Hulk thing you mentioned. Okay, that no, 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 not nowhere. that, no, no, no. That I was went absolutely was... nowhere. It was like, why did they even do that? The most we got of that later on was Infinity War. Like, hey, Nat, hey, Bruce. <laughs> like, that's all we got, bro. No. It was like, what? And then he was sad when Black Widow died, but so was the whole team. Like, yeah. come on now. I, I, I'm, I said for Bruce, maybe. I take back. I, I didn't mean for Black Widow and Bruce. For <laughs> Bruce, yes. Um. But let's be honest. This is this is this is the embodiment of every single kid that put number three in all of our lists. This right here. <laughs> let's be honest. Can we wipe all the teams and agree that Secret Wars is on top? <laughs> That's like all Ben's staying real songs. quiet now. Ben Ben staying real quiet. Ben, I haven't said a thing for a long give me, time. Give me give me your yeah. Give because... us what you're like. Yeah. What 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 are your thoughts, man? Come on now. Sitting After there, everything I just said, he took okay. his headphones. No, he didn't even hear half the stuff we said, bro. I he did actually. Headphones on. I can still hear when they're like right right there. I can still hear. Don't worry. Okay. But okay, here's what I'll say. Immediately, I don't agree with the opinion that it it was contended to be the most important. You know, setting up of character arcs and how it developed throughout the rest of the Infinity Saga. I have said before, we've previously discussed, I think 
that that is obviously Civil War. Civil War is the most important film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Do I think that there are themes within Age of Ultron that then lend into what happens in Civil War? Sure. But I also think that a lot of those themes were already present in prior movies. So this was just like a, a middle movie to get to the crucial stuff, to get to the resolution to all of it. I wouldn't say that this has holds that much significance to any particular storyline because I think all of these characters were already on this path and still have a path after the movie where this is just a stepping stone. And I wouldn't say that it's like one of the most important stepping stones. All of them are important. And Age of Ultron, I don't think is that special and compared to most of the others. So, so give me, okay, for, for what happened in Civil War, right? Tony's side of the argument, because we know Cap, Caps was in Winter Soldier. Give me something that like before Age of Ultron that, that set up Tony for that conflict or for his stance on the Sokovia Accords that, that was before Age of Ultron. It was part of his character growth from the very beginning of the Infinity Saga in his first movie. A lot of the internal conflict that he went through had to deal with he had like he understood about like trust and misuse misuse of power and all of these things and he was also very selfish his own company was supplying weapons to terrorists and so a, a lot of his character growth was realizing that he needs to trust order and structure throughout his first couple of movies he goes on doing whatever he wants as a solo superhero and it's the avengers the first avengers movie where he is kind of like put in his place and it's like you need to be put in check. You can't just be doing whatever you want. So like trust in government, that's been his character growth ever since he was a billionaire, billionaire playboy philanthropist who did whatever the heck he wanted to from the very first movie. I would say that's been in his entire character arc. So so you think Avengers Age of Ultron, what happened in there was nothing more than just like minor to Civil War's plot? I said that it was a stepping stone just like everything else, but I don't think it did anything significant that changed where the characters already were. The Sokovia Accords could have happened without Sokovia. They could have just been an Accords to keep superheroes in check. It could have been whatever event. They could have even brought up just events that happened in prior Marvel movies. They didn't need necessarily Age of Ultron to do that. They used Age of Ultron to do that, but I don't think there was anything too unique about it that directly led to civil war because I think at one point or another within this universe, there was going to be a government that stepped in and said, you guys need somebody above you to tell you what to do, which is even we're seeing hints of that now with the department of damage control. We're still even seeing that where it's not necessarily one specific event, but little things that make a government or an organization say we need to have more control over these enhanced individuals. So, I, I agree with that. It, it is sprinkle. It, it is in there from the very beginning, both of their, yeah, both of their kind of motives for what ultimately happens in civil war. I, I just think without age of Ultron and without what happens in age of Ultron, me personally, I don't think if a government goes up to, to the Avengers pre age of Ultron, like in um, Iron Man three and, and below and says, Hey, um, I think we need to we need to tell y'all when to go and fight crime and when y'all can't. I don't think they'd all be like, "Yeah, let's do it." No, let's not do it. Civil war. I don't think so personally. I I agree with you, which is why I said it's a stepping stone, but why I don't think it's quite as significant as some people are saying that well, it is. Yeah, I don't think it's the most important. No, like so, civil war obviously is. I agree with you there. I just think it's a little bit bigger than what I was initially thinking y'all were trying to say it was. You know what I mean? Like when when it when y'all first started, I was like, I felt like y'all were kind of downplaying it, and I'm like, uh, I think this guy will just so. bait us, guys. I mean, this guy. No, I mean, it's a good discussion. Said. He just said, "Yeah, pretty much agreeing with five thirteen, bro." Like five thirteen said it so bad. <laughs> like <laughs> this kid will just completely switched up. <laughs> oh well i mean i still think it's a good discussion because i i you know i i agree to a certain extent i think it's a little bit more important than what i thought y'all were trying to say in the beginning i thought y'all were saying that we just didn't really need it and that it didn't do much but just like 
kind of give us an Avengers that. movie. I that's what I took it because <laughs> I, like at first <laughs> when Will brought it up, that's what it was like. Uh, no, it's it well, it's easy. it's because of how he worded it, saying it's the most important. To well, I was talking about arts. Tony. I was just going through the list of characters, and I got to Tony, and then that's when Charlie was like, "What?" And that's when we started debating. Yeah. No. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Charlie, you're paying. <laughs> oh, what? It's already my turn. That's crazy. Hold on. I was just. Oh, yeah, I, I thought just we had. I, had I thought we had three minutes. Aiden, you went overtime. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie made me go over time. <laughs> um, geez, there's really not too many like safe choices left. Uh, I don't even think there are any, to be honest with you. Um, I think what, jeez, oh, man, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna land on Ant Man. I think that's where I'm going. Solid. Um, Ant Man, just because. Um, you know, it's still uh, it's better than Ant Man and the Wasp. So, um, it but you know it introduced us to Scott and Scott's a cool character. Introduced us to his friends. Um, I forget the character's name, but the guy who just talked really fast and really funny. Um, but um, you know, Louise, it, come on, don't disrespect Louise. Louise. Sorry, come excuse on. me, <laughs> dude. Sorry. I forgot all all their name. Like they're that little gang of guys. Yeah. Like I don't know, man. Um, but you know it it tried its best to like, I think it was like it, our first real, like kind of side project movie or no, I guess guardians was before that. So, um, but it tried its best to like connect itself to the MCU, the greater MCU still by like including Falcon in the whole thing. Um, but overall, like the villain wasn't like all that great, which is kind of, I think why people are struggling with the whole, he's supposed to be Modoc in quantum mania. I can see the hesitation there because he wasn't the, the greatest villain, but I think the visuals, like it was visually interesting to see them shrinking down and all that kind of stuff. And it was um, something we had never seen before. The dynamic between Scott um, and like wanting to be there for his family and see his daughter, I guess not be there for his family because he's divorced, but be there for his daughter. Um, uh, but still like trying to stay on the straight and narrow, but then he just gets roped up in this whole thing. It's pretty, it's kind of cool. Like it's serviceable. Um, nothing, nothing too grand and crazy. So this is, uh, this was the only thing I could think to, to bring to the table. Okay. okay. I will say I, me, I feel like there's better still on the board, but that is a safe, safe pick. I think it's a safe pick. Okay. I can't wait to see what the, your better is Aiden. <laughs> Maybe Ben will take it. Honestly. Let's see. Oh gosh. Gosh, dang it. This is still so hard. Okay. Oh, still, thank you. For, thank you for dropping hard. in. No, I'm so sorry, Ben. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, thank you for dropping in. I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead. I'm getting distracted. Uh, so, Will, okay, uh, hold on, hold on. Can you highlight Will's real quick? Um, sorry to cut you off, Ben. We're this is only we're only doing released movies so far. Like we did our whole list of anticipation for our most anticipated movies for phases five and six. We did that yesterday. This is just our, our draft. We're picking movies um, that we're trying to make the best list, most comprehensive, like best movie list for all the films that have already been released in the MCU. Like, yeah, we're all the, all the way up to Thor love and thunder right now is what we can pick from. Yeah. Will, you're more than welcome to go uh, throw us a little, uh, a little listen, a little audio oh, download. Say, he said, Oh, oh I, I know. He just said, Oh, I know. Talking Chill. about releases too. Fantastic Four. You know what? I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to interact with, with Will anymore. <laughs> Chan Bautista, what's up, bro? All right, Ben. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, gosh dang it. This is not easy. This is it's not all, easy. It's hard. And I'm between, I'm between three films. I'm going to have to go with my gut on the first pick. My gut is telling me Captain America, the first event. No. Why, Ben? Why are you doing this to me this whole draft? That's the what one I thought was was about? better, Charlie. That's the one I thought really? like, was yeah, I, was I, better I, than I really, Ant Man. I really like Captain America. The I know a lot of people don't. I really like it. Like it. Hmm. Listen, it's it's not my favorite. It's the weakest of the trilogy. But I just read that Cam. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god, brother. Holy <laughs> cow! You know what? Ignoring it. We're moving on. You should ben hide continue. the chat. You're getting salty. Ben, <laughs> ben continue. Ben continue. 
I, I still really like the movie, and every time I rewatch it, there are things that I enjoy, things that I don't. Um, and I've never been a big fan of like the the montage middle through like halfway through the movie, the whole montage through the war. I've never been a big fan of that. I feel like it kind of messes up the whole like story rhythm and everything. Um, setting up Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes as characters, they did that really well, and obviously, at least in my opinion, set up a couple of the most interesting storylines in all of the Marvel Universe, specifically with Captain and the Winter Soldier. So I think it's a very necessary movie to get to some of the future amazing projects, but it's definitely like on the weaker side. I still think it's a pretty safe pick, though. It is. I like it. Charlie gaslight in chat. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, dude, crazy. chat is There's gaslighting no me. I swear to God, you'll be telling me, dude, Charlie has the best list here. Five minutes later, dude, Charlie's list is so dog. Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I like how it started off being like, Charlie, I'm a Charlie stan. <laughs> we're pretending like, hold on, NLE, we're pretending like Ant-Man wasn't a well-renowned movie when it came out? We're gonna pretend like that. This is this is another case of No Way Home just relies on cameos and nostalgia. This is another case of that, right there, right there, <laughs> living proof. Look, I will say, Will, I really wanted Chung Chi, but Ben robbed me of that. I really wanted Chung Chi so I bad. I did. I had to. I'm about ben, to rob you boys of something else, though. Uh, yeah, I feel like you are. Go ahead. If, I swear to God, if you have my pick, because I had two in mind, and one of them was Captain America: First Avenger. I feel like between me. between Charlie and I, we are taking we have to be taking the one that you're thinking this, this of. One, yeah, I I know. I'm sorry. Oh, I know it's coming. Thor Love and Thunder. Oh. Aiden, you were gonna pick that? I was gonna pick it. Dude, look what else. I, is I can't list. wait to hear Ben's explanation for this one. My explanation, it's it's pretty simple. I watched it the first time and I didn't love it. It wasn't as good as Ragnarok. I watched it again and I loved it. I was able to understand a lot more of the deep themes and character arc that that Thor was going through and how it's a great continuation from literally everywhere that he's been and all the loss that he has had and really the movie. And I think I made a TikTok video about this already, the, or maybe I talked about it in my like YouTube review, but like at the core, this movie and his entire journey has led up to this point where he, cause it's always been about for him being worthy of something, even from the very first Thor movie. And in, in this case, it's him learning enough about himself to, to learn that he is worthy of love, which is something that he has had so much loss and experienced so much that had to do with love that, I don't know, the second time around, it's just like I was able to understand those themes. It hit me a lot harder. I had a lot more fun with it. I still think Gore the God Butcher, while underutilized, was a really solid villain in the Marvel Universe. Um and Christian Bale definitely carried that. His performance was phenomenal. And like even just the finale, like the final battle sequence that happens, I'll just say with the kids, that got me so hyped both times that I watched it. It was like so unexpected, but so phenomenal. So I honestly think people should give this movie another shot because like there's a really solid film in there. I didn't see it the first time. But the second time, I definitely had a, a deeper appreciation for it. I think it's a good pick. I know it's no, been yeah. controversial, but I'm I'm definitely happy that I got that one. Everything you're saying, I completely agree with. I just like, what are we ranking this on? Are, are we ranking this on like what we think other people will think, or just our own like, just like personal? The, your your best like the best movie draft, like whatever's up there, like they yeah, like you know, like objectively the best, right? Like a competition, like, well, yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's see. That's what, and that's why I was like Thor loving, like, because everybody right now is like, like, look at Will in chat. Right, I think Will's opinion right now. I mean, granted, he said it's better than Mom, but I mean, earlier he said that Thor Love and Thunder was just like kind of eh, you know? It's like Will's opinion is like the overwhelming opinion I've seen so far, like Thor Love and Mid type thing, you know? That's what. That's why I was because I, th- I I agree with you. I love Thor Love and Thunder. I I, I put it at an eight uh, eight or eight and a half somewhere around there, like you did. Uh, and I agree with you. I think like Thor's that character arc, everything they did with Jane, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, that's why I was just like, I was confused because I, I didn't know if we were trying to make the, emo- the most obje- objectively loved list. I think yeah. it's got to be, that's a ba- why- it's got to be a balance, you know, like I'm not, gonna, I mean, I'm not going to stray away from like my opinion to the point just to please other people. But like, 
in my opinion, I wouldn't have picked Infinity War first if I'm strictly going off of my Marvel ranking because I technically have it second. But like okay. that's a balance of you know my opinion plus a little bit of influence by the people's vote, which like Thor: Love and Thunder, I wouldn't get the people's vote. You know, like a lot of people are trashing on it. Okay. But in that case, I have to stick with it. Like it's very clearly my next pick. Okay, that solidifies my next pick then too. This com- like what we just. Oh uh, yeah, I, I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, okay. Aiden. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I don't think you is- were gonna pick this. The next one that well, I'm gonna pick. Yeah, I I think I was going to with with my next pick because <laughs> really? like, honestly, okay. just like look at what's on the board. It's like exactly that's what much. Yeah, that's why so. I went with Ant Man because I wasn't sure about like this conversation we just had. I would have put um this next one that I'm going to do above Ant Man, but uh, it's too late now. I'm not going to swap it around. Obviously, so it's it's Doctor. Um, I mean, Strange. you can I know it's Doctor Strange. Yeah, it is. You yeah. could swap them around if you want. It doesn't really change like the list. I because uh, I like I do like Multiverse of Madness more yeah. than Ant Man. I love Multiverse of Madness. Um, Are we? But we're not ba- like the order actually doesn't matter, right? It's just the overall. It's theme. just the list. Uh, yeah, just yeah. Like every every movie that's well, on there. honestly, okay. it, well, it, uh, yeah, because yeah, it don't matter. It's just a list of what we ended up coming out with. Well, I mean, you never explained that, dude. You just said eight out of ten, and because Thor had a kid, now that's all you said. <laughs> you didn't give any other deeper thought into the movie. You said Thor, Thor has a kid. I think that's really cool. And you said everything else was just eh. So it's like okay, comprehensive list, like comprehensive ra- rating right there. Yeah, mid. Um, I saw, <laughs> I saw some people say Troyer. Um, we no, we're doing every single movie, every movie that. that uh, the that Marvel Studios has released so far. I also, I say I specify Marvel Studios because I saw someone else say um, aren't Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield's movies technically MCU now? But we're just doing Marvel Studios released movies um, up up to this point. But we're gonna uh, get. Did I spoil that for you? I'm so sorry. Not yeah, in the way you think. Not too. in the way you think. I, I think that's so. Um, okay. Yeah. Get, I'll, I'll explain a, my next pick kid. then. Um, High key liked Eternals. He did not, guys. Okay, Will Will is my friend in real life. He did not like Eternals back when it came <laughs> out. Just saying that. Um, I did, but whatever. Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Ah, uh, Aiden already touched on a lot of it already, but um, yeah, I think this movie is f- not phenomenal, but I I really put it. It's in my top ten MCU, one hundred percent. Um, it I think what it does for Doctor both Doctor Strange and Wanda, completely amazing. Um, I've, I've, I went pretty hard on it back when the movie came out, um, about how much I love Wanda's characterization and, uh, Dr. Strange's characterization. I think if I had to talk about some flaws, America Chavez is kind of underutilized probably like they probably could have done a little bit more with her, uh, in, in, in it with, within the movie. Um, but I think Dr. Strange's whole arc about, um, teaching us that like we don't always have to be happy you don't have to lie about being happy and you also don't have to be the one that is in charge all the time as aiden talked about like you don't have to be the one in control of everything like let other people help you let other people um be the leader or whatever um and then wanda i think i think it was set up amazingly i know people say it was rushed but i think they set it up uh, pretty well with the end of wandavision she was looking through the dark hold and they tell us in wandavision that the dark hold is an evil thing and that shouldn't be touching it shouldn't be messing with it and so we see her touching it messing with it at the end of wandavision cut to now multiverse of madness she's using it and she's been corrupted by it her fingers are all black we see um and she i like it also because it's not just the book like she made the choice to get involved with the book because she knew it was bad um but she also knew that it would help it would help her get her to her end goal of wanting to get her kids back. And I think it's a very compelling thing that throughout the movie, this one thing that she's fighting so hard to get to that by the time she gets to the end and she sees the kids, the things that she was so fighting so hard to get to, they think she's a monster. They are horrified by her. And I think that's really deep. And that's like a really like, wow, OK. And like that's a good twist for her. That's a good spin for her. And that that's a moment for her to realize, OK, I'm. Like I'm really in the wrong here. And I don't, I don't mind the whole, uh, I know a lot of people were pissed off about the, uh, I can't, the Illuminati. I couldn't think of their name, the Illuminati and how they died off so quick. I mean, obviously that was just to show Wanda's power and strength. Um, but I think it fits in their character. If you know them from the comics, um, they're an arrogant group of people. They, they, 
don't they don't listen to anybody else that's why they don't tell anybody when they meet they talk about very exclusive things they think anybody else's opinion is uh far lesser than theirs so i i feel like their char- characterization was great as well um and then i will was say, saying in chat something about um it was carried by the cameos. This is what I'm talking about. Will is the embodiment of who we see in the TikTok comments, guys. I'm not kidding you. He is the living embodiment. Like if you were to meet one of those kids in real life, that's Will. So like I, I completely wholeheartedly disagree with that. I just gave my reasons for why I disagree with that and which is why it's on the list. And I would put it above Ant-Man. But again, as we talked about, it doesn't really matter the 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 number that the list goes in, the order that it goes in, excuse me. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's not it's not a horrible movie, and and I've I've grown to like it more than than how I initially felt when I left the theater, so um, I can respect that. And yeah, I, I touched on it a bit earlier as well. So y'all kind of put me in a tough tough spot, bro. Like there is not much I can I can really pick for my next two picks. Um. Uh, this is difficult. <laughs> um, okay. I guess I'm going to have to go with, oh man, this is hard. Uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. Give me, this is so hard, bro. I don't want to say it because just even drafting it, it's like, <laughs> give me Black Widow. Uh, dude, I was going to say that. I was like, we all know yeah. it's going to be Black what? Widow, brother. Come on now. Dang. There's, I, I don't know. I still have another pick after this also. So, um, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot to like in this film. There's there's some to like in this film. Yelena is obviously amazing. Florence Pugh is awesome. Um, David Harbour actually absolutely kills it i loved even just seeing him in the mcu i was so excited for that i think the i think if this movie was released in phase one it'd be a lot better it'd be a a lot it'd be more well received or literally any phase other than after her dying in endgame you know it's just it ruined a lot for me, especially the post or not the post credit scene, but especially the ending scene where she's like just walking away, and it's like, yeah, bro, you're about to go die, like you know, you're about to go fight this war that is not going to end good for you. What am I supposed to be like happy about? Um, I don't know. It's just it's back with like the prequel stuff, um, and yes, Black Widow for Iron Man three. Any any 365 or 366 day out of the year i'm picking black widow for iron man 3 i'm sorry <laughs> i absolutely hate iron man 3 um taskmaster was also cool i don't like what they ended up doing with the character um but yeah i think overall it, it was fine but it is like the definite like it, it is legit like honestly a mid movie like five to six out of ten it's, it's not that great and i have reasoning for that you know like Could i just explain? mentioned I, I i do i just explained it. i think this movie should have been made actually no it's just mid that's all i have to say so my second <laughs> pick no nah. i just think it, it should, it's just a movie out of its time you know um everything they did with taskmaster as well i absolutely hated um i feel like knowing how the story ends up it's it's not really like you know, I, you have Red Guardian and you have Yelena that, that are up in the air. And then her, like, weird love interest that was in the movie for 10 minutes. What am I supposed to care about? I know I know Black Widow dies. What, what else am I supposed to care about with these characters? I know you're probably going to bring Yelena back. Okay, so I know she's safe. Am I supposed to care about David Harbour's character, even though I just met him an hour ago? And so I don't, there's just a lot of things that don't work for me in this movie. Are you plotting something, Ben? What's up? I think he is, but gosh. Here's my thing, okay? When a movie releases, is that really going to affect the quality of the actual movie? Because that's mainly what I heard. You said multiple things and it all tied back into like, if this movie released earlier, it would have been better. Does that really change how high quality the movie is? I mean, I, I would I say so. I would say for the character 
for the characterization within it and like the character quality of writing absolutely because it goes back to the prequel conversation that we had during kenobi because like i agree with him it's like hard for me to care about the stakes when it comes to to nat because i know she makes it out of this i know she doesn't get her arm cut off because she has two arms in infinity war and endgame so it's like there i mean that's just like very like small uh insignificant like example that i was giving but uh, just like you know for in terms of writing these characters it's hard to put them in situations for the audience to sit there and be like oh geez like this is like i'm on the edge of my seat like this is like this is really good writing like how can i how can I connect in that way if I know where the character is going to be later on? And it's like that's that that's like the whole precipice of my argument against prequel stuff, certain prequel stuff. I like and I that's why I don't think the I, I don't think uh, the original Star Wars prequels quite fall under that, because I think the, the draw to those is watching Anakin's fall to the dark side and watching how he did that rather than this is like you're tr giving nat a whole nother fight with these people and i'm supposed to be scared for her and her going into it but i i'm not invested at all because okay i know i know nat's gonna make it out of this this is this is this is crazy she's in this gigantic floating fortress but and I, she's falling but like i know she's going to survive somehow yeah. so it's like and and I, it's like i'm sorry were you gonna uh no 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 that's one? not pretty much pretty um much it. And, and yeah, and it's like, okay, well, I'm sure y'all made this movie to introduce us to Yelena Belova, so I'm sure she's coming back as well. It just it, it just lowers a lot of, like, the attention and draw that, that you would usually have towards a movie like this. And so, I don't know. I Like, it's nah, – actually, I won't say that. That's a bad comparison. But – and also what Will said here, and this is main, mainly my, uh, like, reasoning for – the timing of the movie i could have been more attached to her and then seeing her die would have been better um because you had the opportunity to attach this before she did you know come to her fate and on vormir and then it's also back to like all the black widows it's like okay there's these trained assassins around the world that need to be freed like as a character as a person okay that's cool but it's like in the overall mcu why does that matter? Because we never see these Black Widows brought up again all the way up until Endgame. We never hear about... I mean, we we might have heard about some of them, but we never see them brought back up again. They hold no like threat to the Avengers at this moment, and then they we know they never do until Endgame, which that also goes back into the, the whole timing of the movie. But still, it's just like... It's a cool concept. It's just... You have all these people, and I get you want us to care about the motive... It just didn't work for me. And then all the Taskmaster stuff. It's like, I, I don't know, does she really need to be this this girl that survived, you know, uh, a building being blown up from Natasha for it to actually matter to us and to her and her and the character? Why not just make it someone that the the dude from the Black Widows just sent out because he wanted to kill Natasha for that? Um or even just make it a girl that he sent out to kill Natasha for that. I just feel like you making it her, making it this little kid and making that like a big twist. It's just like, ah, oh, that doesn't really do it for me. And just making them not talk at all. It's just. Mm. I don't know if I agree with that last part, but everything else you said. What? The Taskmaster stuff? Yeah. Because I, 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 I mean, I think like attaching it to Natasha's past gives it more weight. Me personally. I, just not in that way. I just didn't like the way they did it with the little girl being like oh she didn't blow up she's actually coming back to kill you because you blew up her family it's like i also liked it because like it gave us more um insight insight into like the whole budapest aspect of it uh, and granted that that speaks more to the entire mcu as a whole rather than that individual movie but that's just a added added detail for me yeah i can agree with that i i got i got i got to yeah. i got to speak my point okay so we know that Tony dies, we know that Natasha dies in Endgame. If I ever go back and re-watch the first movies within the MCU, like, I'm still going to view it and appreciate their character growth and their character arc. And, like, even though I know that Tony Stark is going to die, seeing him and Iron Man and the Avengers and all that buildup is still going to be satisfying to me. And in the same way, if I re-watch the Marvel Universe... I'm probably going to watch Black Widow before Infinity War 
which I think will add that layer of caring because like at this point, yeah, we know Tony Stark's going to die. But if you watch any movie with Tony Stark in it, do you now know, oh, he's going to die? I don't really care. No, I think that there is still a lot of depth that can be added to it. So even though the movie was released at the wrong time, I still think you have to view it for what it is. Even if we know the end result of what's going to happen to her, I still think it can add a lot. Like if they were to release a project that takes place within the Infinity Saga and it had Tony Stark in it, are we going to say, oh, I don't really care because we know Tony Stark dies? No, it can add more depth to his character, make you appreciate it more, further his story, even if it could have been released during the Infinity Saga. And maybe that's just only a perspective that I have. But at least for me, I think while, yes, it would have it could have aided to how much we care about it if it was released prior to Infinity War. I still think that even if you know a character is going to die, you can still find more depth and meaning within more storylines, kind of like Kenobi. You know, we know exactly what's going to happen. We know that there are no stakes or whatever, but the emotional depth that we were given to further the relationship between Kenobi and Anakin that added a lot to me. That got me emotional, even if I know the outcome, even if I know what's going to happen, and even if it was released after everything that we already know. So at least for me, that's kind of the perspective that I have. Even if I know the outcome, if they're going to tell a story while the character's still alive, I think it should be viewed as that. I. Uh- I, I disagree with comparing it to Kenobi. I get like I get the prequel can, comparing the prequel aspect of it, but it's like I care more about Obi Wan and Darth Vader as characters even before seeing even before prequel stuff and even before the Kenobi show than I care about Black Widow as a character. You know, that's right. and and that's that's what gra- that's what gravitates me towards that. And also, it's like I don't know. It, I <laughs> I get what you're saying about like, oh, does it take everything away if I go and rewatch a movie? Well, no, because you once lived that buildup for the first time, you know, at, at first. Here, you never lived anything other than what we saw. And then they're just like, oh, hey, here, this also happened while, before she died. Here's this. And you're just kind of like, okay, this is cool. But I mean, this would have been better to see before she died. And it's like that that's one of my gripes, but also I just don't really like it as a movie. I don't really like the the um, the villain, what they do with the villain. I don't like the premise of the movie, the hidden villain, the old old dude. I can't remember his name, but like for the topic of like the conversation, like, yeah, I I don't know. I don't you've got to live that once before without knowing the outcome so you can appreciate it for that while here you've lived through all her stories and now they're like, Oh, Hey, here, here's another one, by the way. And you're just like, yeah, this is, this is all right. But like, you know, this would have worked better before she was alive. So does under that same logic, does the Loki show not impact you emotionally because we've seen a Loki that went through his life and died? I don't, I don't think that's because yeah, we've we've seen a Loki that that died and everything, but it's completely different from. Okay, here's here's Natasha. Uh, good night, Annalie. Thank you for stopping by, bro. Appreciate appreciate you, you bro. Yeah, thank, thank you, you man. For showing love. <sighs> Black Widow. We know we know where she ends up. We know where her story ends. And if they bring her back in the future and call back some of that stuff in Black Widow, if they bring her back to the multiverse or whatever. I still don't think that'll change how I feel about this movie and when it came out. Loki, one, it's an interesting character that we don't know much about, that we've grown with and loved through all these movies. And now you're going to give us more of him, except you're going to take him on a different, you're going to take him a different way that we don't know the outcome of. You're going to take him to these different places and you're going to put stakes on him that we don't. Uh, we don't know if Loki will survive. And it's just like when they prune him in episode four, you're like, what, what just happened? You know, like there's no way Loki's dead. Right. And so I don't, I don't know. I don't see that logic with um, the same as I do with black widow. I just think, cause that's a different Loki, you know, like it's not, uh, as you guys said last night, it's a different Loki with different experiences. Like, um, 
we don't know when his end point is going to be um because it's not like we don't know he obviously he can't die in this infinity war spot anymore because he's like existing throughout without or sorry not without but outside of time itself and with the tva at least that's what we're told so um but i mean i don't because was i think you mentioned the kenobi and uh um anakin thing and i feel like that's like you go back and you watch those because like they established that in the original trilogy like they used to be friends and you want to see how they were friends and you want to see that relationship um that's like that's the draw to going back and watching those but there was no other draw with with black widow there wasn't any like other aside from it seems like throwing it giving us another black widow it didn't seem like there was another uh, any other draw to it and so when i'm sitting here watching this like i i can't get attached to her relationship with anybody because i've never seen any of these characters in the mcu uh i can't get attached to anything that she's doing uh personally because i know that um there's no stakes I, I get you can you can do an emotional moment like there was still some emotional stuff between her and yelena um mostly yelena because like like she said like you guys lied to me my whole life the one thing i cared about the one thing i thought was real you lied to me like there's there can be emotional moments there and like there's some turmoil there between black widow and yelena but that's like that's personal to that movie and i agree that that doesn't that that stuff like that that doesn't matter when the movie was released but i think for the character herself black widow I, I also just want to say I disagree with what Will just said in chat. Five out of ten character, incorrect. But um, I could I could talk about like how she was. I think her characterization, especially in Endgame, was really really good. Um, but uh, it's just like Black Widow. The build up for for that after the fact that she she's gone and she we we had her little emotional arc, her stakes. Um, I, with Hawkeye and everything, all like that already happened. We already saw it. Now you're trying to give me, oh my God, can she make it out of this? Like the struggle of like when she's being mind controlled by the dude, it's like, I wonder when she's going to get out of this. <laughs> instead of yeah. instead of just like, oh my God, can she get out of this? Like what's happening? Like, you know, it's not, it, I guess that it speaks more to the experience rather than the quality of it. But um, I don't know. Either way, to me, I, I feel like the, when you, your experience and the quality of it kind of almost a little bit go not hand in hand entirely, but they definitely don't, they don't completely miss each other. They graze each other uh, in the, in, in their passing, like your experience of watching the film and the quality of the film, they definitely somewhat touch. Um, Bro doesn't read my full comment for like most, she gets real good towards the end. He said for most of the MCU, she's a five out of 10 character for most of the stuff she's in which would probably what, be like iron, iron man, man 2? 2 iron man 2 is that the only time she was 5 out of 10 avengers avengers Age of ultron avengers they gave her soldier the, yeah soldier, exactly Aven, Aven, literally from avengers 1 they gave her the whole i owe hawkeye a debt he saved my life i have red in my ledger um i i've so much red like there's no so much i can't even wipe out like what are you talking about five out of 10 for, for Iron Man two her introduction. Congrats. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, that's kind of where I stand on it. It, it affects my like view of this movie a bit. Um, but it just goes back to like, I don't know. I, I can enjoy a prequel. <laughs> Bro, he just says stuff, bro. Don't even read it. He just says stuff. I swear to God. Don't even read it. Don't even give him the satisfaction. Uh, he just dude. says dumb stuff. He wants a reaction. I um, I don't, it just goes back like, yeah, I'd watch a, I'd watch a prequel on um, Loki. I'd watch a prequel on Thor. I'd watch a prequel on Anakin and, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'd watch a prequel on Saul Goodman from Breaking Bad. I don't know how the good that could be. You know, I, I, I'd, I'd like these things. To <laughs> Better lawyer than Matt Murdock, so I'm not tripping. But I mean, it just goes back like Black Widow. Yeah, I mean, do, it, does it affect it? I won't lie. Yeah, a little bit. Here's the final thing I'll say. I agree with you guys, and I don't know if I wasn't clear. I do think that the release of the movie hurt the movie, but I'm saying like part of my perspective is viewing it for what it is, and I feel like that gives a little bit more appreciation 
for the film than if you really let the release of it seriously affect it by not trying to care at all. And I, I agree with you that it does hurt it. I don't think it hurts my viewing experience as much as it hurt your guys' viewing experience. And honestly, I, I, I do need to rewatch it. And maybe I will rewatch it and go in with that mindset and see if my thoughts change. Um, that's just kind of where I stuck on it since I've hmm. watched it. Also. After all that, Aiden, what's your next pick? <laughs> yeah. So my next pick. Aiden's always <laughs> taking up so much time. Oh, whatever. It's <laughs> y'all. First it was Charlie, and then now it's you giving, talking, and debating. <laughs> Um, my next pick, this is tough, man, because I don't, I don't know. Um, there's not much left. My next pick would probably have to be, mm, uh, I don't know. Like anything I pick is going to make my list look bad but I, I do i'll get the good ones out of the way so y'all get stuck with the ugly ones and i'll take thor i'll take the first thor movie mm. um okay. still kind of fun i i prefer i'd i'd rather have this on my list than some of the other movies that are still up here unless i'm completely missing something i feel like i'd rather take this movie um I don't know. Uh, like we 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 had our gripes. We've said our, our our talk on it on our very first episode. We were all on with, or actually the first episode we had Charlie on before he was even a a host of this. We had our Marvel tier list, and we talked a lot about this movie on there. It's it's forgettable. There's not a lot of things you could take away from this movie. Um, the chemistry just isn't there. And um, I mean, granted, in Love and Thunder, they capitalize on that and they make it phenomenal in there. But as for this movie, it's not really there. Um, there are so cool things such as Thor getting used to Earth around him. And even as Ben says, we, in we get introduced to Asgard, this beautiful mystical planet that we've never seen before in the MCU, just to spend the whole movie on Earth. It's like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how, that, how I feel about that. But I mean, there was cool things such as Loki and Odin um, and even like Frigga. And then, like I said, getting to see Thor interact on Earth, getting to see wasn't was hawkeye not yeah hawkeye was in this movie right yeah getting to see hawkeye in here um thor having to learn how to be worthy again there's some cool things to take away from this movie uh only reason it's on my list is because there's just like straight dumpster fire on on the rest of this slate <laughs> uh, not not really dumpster fire but there's there's just some pretty bad movies left on here and if i were to take one out of all of these i'd probably take thor I think you're forgetting some movies. I'll be honest. I don't know. I'm, I'm there's, looking. There's, there's at least two movies that I think are very clearly above Thor. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. One right. of them for sure. One of them for sure. I think. Well, then why don't see, you let me know? <laughs> see, here's the hard part for me is I know what I personally would pick, but I also know what's been getting a bit more traction lately. So if I wanted some brownie points, I might choose this one. But if I if I didn't and I wanted my actual personal opinion, I would choose this one. And, you know, I feel like I know which one of these Ben is going to pick. So I could screw Ben's list up. I said I have two that I think are better than Thor. So I'm happy either way. This true. But, but I think you, you definitely have a preference as to which one you would pick. Well, I know my Marvel ranking, so. But like, you could think it's you can think it's better, but how will it how would it look on your list? How good would it look sitting up there if someone saw that and was like, oh, it's good, but I don't like that movie." Compared to if they just if they were just like, "Oh, Thor." That's or, what oh, I, that's what I mean. Something. That's what, that's why I went with Thor. I think Aiden, I think the options you had, I think you could have picked. Let me two know because that I'm looking better at these on your and list I'm like, than Thor did. <clears throat> Because just know. looking at the list, like right now, currently, ah, dude, oh my god, this is what are you really gonna say? Hard. Eternals, like really it, you think Eternals is is better? Because like I could have put that on there, but what are people gonna think if they look down there and see Eternals? You know that movie That's gets hated thing. on. You know that That's movie gets thing. shitted on. That's the thing, but that that would be my personal one. 
And then the other option, oh no, I, uh, Ben, uh, uh, now it's like I said, uh, hold on, hold on, man. That would be my worry. personal one. But then the other one, and I'm not saying this is my pick, but then the other one that's getting a bit more traction right now is the Incredible Hulk. I was, I was, I was close to picking that one actually. And so I think if I were to put the Incredible Hulk on this list right now, I would get the brownie points because a lot of people are like, "This is the last real Hulk we got." Hulk, Incredible Hulk, such an underrated movie. And then, but then I personally, I like Eternals more. Eternals, I think, did a lot with its characters, and I really, really loved it for what it did. And I really. I'm really, I just, I kind of more than anything, I just want to stump Ben. I want to stump Ben's pick. But I just, I'm not 100% on what, I think I know which one Ben's pick would be, but I'm just not 100%. Oh, I think Benjamin. you should be, I think you're 0% on what my pick will be. Mm. So it wasn't either of the two I just said. I'm not saying that. I just uh, want to throw you okay. off a little bit. <laughs> okay. What would Ben pick? hold on let me look at what my list already looks like how bad would it look if i put eternals on there that's what i'm saying that's why i didn't put it do i think eternals is better than thor yes i prefer eternals to thor but how would it look if it's sitting there on my list and someone catches a glimpse of that and is like l list honestly I'll though honest, maybe thor, all maybe of thor our lists are list. pretty dang good yeah Maybe Thor currently in its current state wouldn't hurt your list because there's so many people going that's back why. saying Thor 1 is good now because Love and Thunder they thought was mid. So it might help you yeah. a little bit. That's why I went with it. Um, safe choice. I went with the brownie points. That's still not the safest choice, but I, I, I think you'll get a couple, couple more points. Oh, damn. Okay, I, I've dragged this on too long. I just need to say one. Okay. You know, actually, I'm flipping a coin. Flip a coin. Do it. Flip a coin. It. Chance, chance can't, chance can't hurt me. Okay, okay. Let me get in my head. Which one's which? Okay. Flip a coin. Ah, Incredible Hulk. Okay. All right. Incredible Hulk. And you know, if I wanted to talk about the movie a little bit, like it is the last time we got Savage. I mean, not the last time. I, I guess we didn't. We got, you know, we got some in Age of Ultron, um, and and I think Avengers one more than Age of Ultron, kind of Savage Hulk, um, but like we got like some really good Hulk action in this movie um, that we've kind of been missing a little bit since then. So, but I mean, other than that, like I don't really, they didn't give me time to really care about um, Bruce's and uh, Betty's relationship. Um, they didn't. Um, they introduced leader at the end and we haven't seen him. I guess he's just gone now. Um, and uh, Charlie is not looking good. Can't lie. Oh my <laughs> God, Kim. Um, yeah. And I, like it gave us abomination. Look what we're doing with abomination now. So that's, that's Troy. Troy, you were saying so much yesterday about how Ben was riding and now you're over here. Hob like on some there's no nope, writing there's no on some writing. nope type shit huh? there's no writing in this list I can't be writing Aiden Troyer no Troyer's over here writing you okay he just has an opinion <laughs> <laughs> I still have one pick left by All the right, way go ahead go yeah ahead. we know what it is what is it Ant Man and the Wasp <laughs> nope please don't say it it's Captain that's Marvel. not what I was gonna say nope Eternals Eternals nope what wow then you're i uh, do do not uh, all right okay no no okay. don't say anything and let, let him let, right. let him dig his grave let him dig his grave i'm not digging my grave at all i would have said that this and eternals would be above thor okay iron man 3 iron man 3 i I'll, i'd put iron man 3 above thor one sure i would and do that too. and also we were talking about how it looks on the list look at how that looks on my list my list looks strong it looks beautiful. I don't. I don't know. I hate. It looks that better movie. than Eternals. I'll be honest. It looks better than Eternals. I'm glad you didn't go with Eternals for the sake of your list. Yeah. I'm looking at my list now. I'm very happy with that list. That's a pretty. I dang think good Thor: list. Love and Thunder is going to hurt your list, and Far From Home are going to hurt your list. But I, Far From Home for sure. I think Thor: Love and Thunder. It's. I think you'll get some of the, some of them on there, but. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, don't know. A, lot of, a lot of this is I, I mainly went off of my personal opinion. Yeah, That's the biggest thing. Um, so 
in my opinion, yeah, I would I would put Iron Man three above Thor, Eternals, and Hulk. I like I think I like it a little bit better than you guys do. And honestly, there is a big group of people that are pretty big fans of Iron Man three. So I don't know. I I'm happy with that pick. That's why I said that Charlie had a zero percent chance of getting it because he wasn't even talking about Iron Man three. Mm. Okay. All right. I thought for well. sure you. I thought you were. If anything, I thought you were going to do Incredible Hulk. But no. All right. I like how we just dipped three viewers after we finished the list. <laughs> um, we will go. I'll go through my list. Everyone will go through their list list real quick. So my list, I got Avengers Endgame, uh, Spider Man No Way Home, The Avengers, Guardians Volume Two, Doctor Strange, Avengers Age of Ultron, Black Widow, and Thor. And I picked third. Um, my list uh, is uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, Iron Man, Black Panther, Spider-Man Homecoming, Ant-Man, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and Incredible Hulk. And I picked second. I got first pick, and my team is... Avengers Infinity War, Thor Ragnarok, Guardians of the Galaxy, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, Spider-Man Far From Home, Captain America the First Avenger, Thor Love and Thunder, and Iron Man 3. I think we all have something on our list that that brings it down a little bit. Like there's there's some controversy. For, um, yeah, for me it's Black Widow for sure. I would say Black Widow and Thor. And maybe yeah. even Doctor Strange. I've heard some people say that they like are I've bored seen, with the movie. I don't. I don't. I've seen a lot of people say they really like it. So I don't know. I I, I don't know. I've seen a lot of people say they really like it as a movie, plus all the visuals in it. So I think I'm pretty safe with that one. So I would go as far as saying Black Widow and Thor, but even Thor, like Charlie said, some people are going back and saying like, you know what, this was when Thor was good or whatever. Yeah. So. Okay, I'll, I mean, I'll wrong, be honest. But, yeah. I'll be totally honest. I think that Aiden has the overall best team. Really? I don't know. I, I don't know. Endgame and No Way Home carry you a lot, for sure. I got lucky with that third pick, for sure. But I don't know. Like, Infinity War, Ragnarok, Guardian, Shang-Chi. That's a strong top four. But then these Winter Soldier and Civil War on the same team... Yeah, but Dude, that's big for me. That's big. That's, for me. that's. I'll be honest, though. Like Iron Man and Black Panther and Spider Man Homecoming are good. I don't think they're great. I think your... I think I'd, I'd say Iron Man. I think Iron Man is universally loved. I think that that carries also. I think people yeah. have lowered it on their list, but yeah, it's still loved for sure. But my thing is like, okay, you look at that three and four and compare it to Aiden and I's threes and fours. I I don't think they compete. I would say Iron spot. Man one competes with the first Avengers, but I'd I'd say Charlie's three and four compares with my three and four just because my four it's and like Guardians very two, controversial. Yeah. So yeah, I would agree with what Aiden just said too. I I think it's tough though. I think this it is, is. going to be way more divided than than yeah. last night's. Bro, I don't get comments, bro. I'd be asking people, hey, comment. I got two comments, and I got like 30 likes. I'm like, guys, comment. I want you to comment. You got, you, okay, you got to start off with the list on there. That was the Just one put thing. put it up there first? Okay. Start off with the list. Say, we made this list. Go through it. You know, short attention spans. People can't right. look at something for more than two seconds. I tried to get the hook to be like, I ranked phase five and six, you know? That's yeah. what I tried to have the hook be. But, yeah, I got... Let's see. Let me. I'll look at the ones I got that are like actually. Yes, this list. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And almost all of those were Ben's. <laughs> I like solo movies more than big scale Avengers movies. Obviously, the Avengers movies have the build up and hype factor, but I don't know. Then why does Ben have best, Troyer? Explain that to me. Expl I get Civil War. Civil War is like a ensemble movie. But Winter Soldier, Iron Man, Black Panther, Homecoming. I have all the solo movies. I have all the solo movies, bro. What are you talking about? Ragnarok, Shang-Chi, Far From Home, First Avenger, Thor Love and Thunder. I mean, 
I guess but Ragnarok had Hulk in it, I guess, but all at the same time, Winter Soldier had Black Widow in it too. So I had I had 65 comments on my video. I don't know if you guys can see this. But all I see is three, 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 three. Dude, there were like no ones, bro. I feel so eight, eight, nine. Yeah, there was none, dude, at all. Here's what I think it is. I think it actually makes sense because his and mine were so similar. Because like, if you agree with mostly Aiden and I, then most people would probably go towards my list. So it's either you agree with mine or you agree with Charlie's because most people think that my list is better between Aiden and I's. So like, there's two camps of people. And if they're in Aiden and I's camp, then they typically veered towards me, which yeah. means that Aiden just never got any appreciation, even though yeah. it was nearly identical. Yeah, which sucks because I even changed my list around a couple times. And I was like, okay, this is good. I, I'm comfortable with this. Just for it to be almost exactly the same as Ben's. I was like, hey, bro, I like it. It just means I'm different. I'm different. There you go. Hey, yeah, there's I some mean, people agreeing with you, too. Taking some L's, but you are different. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this was an overall success. I'm excited to post this one. This one's going to be an interesting one. Um, this was really fun, dude. I liked, I liked this. We had some awesome yeah, discussions. Cool, yeah, we should do with DCEU next. <laughs> We're Wait. all going to have bad lists, lists just like offering. How many movies are we going to pick? One? <laughs> like, I know, right? That's what about are you all talking you about? <laughs> oh, Lordy. Black Panther, Winter Soldier, Civil War, and Homecoming carry your list, Charlie. One, two, three. That's about a solid four. four. Yeah, That's so half my four. list, half my list carries me. That's good to know. Good to know, Troyer. Good to know. Isn't that the point? Isn't the point to have great movies? No, well, no, but that's what I'm saying. Like that, that, that helps me. Like that, I mean, half of my list is good. I'll take it. I'll take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't you- know. Do you know what this episode kind of makes we want to do? I don't know how you guys feel about this. We got more into like intense, I'll, I'll call it heated discussions than we have in the past about movies, specifically Age of Ultron and Black Widow. <laughs> I honestly think that if we find certain things that we like really disagree upon, we dedicate like time to just like debate, like really hone in and do like. And, and I know we're all respectful. Like, I'm not offended by the way anybody yeah, said no, anything. No, no. I don't yeah, care. Yeah. I know none of us care. It's all fun, and we had a good time discussing it. Knowing that, I would love to do, like, a more let's do this one topic and go really deep and, like, debate it, debate it. Not just, like, oh, we're just discussing it. I like this. I like that. No, we're, like, you are wrong, and here's why. The I would, man. I would love to. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> no, from, yeah, that from that the did. directors of Cherry. <laughs> nah, yeah, I'm totally down for that. Um, because I know we div- we had a lot of div- divisive opinions on multiverse and Thor, so yeah, bro. I feel like sense. Ben wants to. He used to be on the debate team, bro. Like that's. I know he's, he's gonna. He's, he's so floor, like though. he's preparing for this. No, I didn't. Ben did, not me. <laughs> okay, I didn't. Okay, I didn't lead the debate team. I was in debate, which it is very helpful. And what I will say is, I think it has made our communication a lot easier and clearer because I can hear what you guys say and distinguish. Like, if there's you know misunderstanding from any of us, I could be like, "Yeah, I agree on this thing." Here's where I like specifically disagree. It turns out we mostly agree on most things about like all the movies. So I feel like. I don't know. I mean, Charlie, you're an amazing speaker, and I think your reasoning is amazing. And I, I agree with Troyer that, like, I think you could absolutely crush it in any sort of debate setting. No, yeah, I'm not saying I'm scared. I'll step up to the challenge. Uh, I'm, just saying, yeah. I'm just saying Ben Ben is prepared. That's what I'm saying. I'm not that prepared. It's fun. I, okay, it's just fun. <laughs> it's just fun, okay? We don't necessarily have to crown somebody as right, necessarily yeah i know we will but we don't have probably but that's the thing i feel like if we don't do that then it's like it's not it's not the same level of satisfaction that like a viewer would get you know not from us like we'll be fine with it but a a viewer wants to see a winner i'm sure but i think the controversy controversy could be cool you know like people coming in expecting like heated discussions about different topics and I don't know. Could it could be you just fun? Have to find a talk like a topic to argue about, like why Multiverse of Madness is a top six MCU movie. Like, 
maybe that. don't even start. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're not doing this now. Don't oh, even start. Go for another hour doing this. It's not even a top ten. It's not even the top. See, that's Thank that's, you, that's where we'd start. That's where we'd start right there. Hey, Troy's spreading it's, some love uh, in here. Do you know where I have it on my Marvel ranking shows and movies? I have it twentieth. Wow, hey, Charlie, you think I'll Moon you know. Knight's better than it, bro. Get out of here, man. Moon Knight's Moon Get Knight's top here. ten. Moon Knight's seventh. I That's love insane. Moon Knight. The only good That's episode of Moon Knight is five. The only good episode. Every other one is garbaggio. No, 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 no. Moon Knight is peak. Absolutely. Peak. Tootenly it's garbaggio. Nope. Whoa. There we go. We Moon Knight is way better than Mom. Troyer. Oh my God, Troyer. Troyer. See, I win. I won this. Debate. Troyer, where's your house at on the Minecraft world, bro? I'm. I am blowing that up with TNT. <laughs> bro, he he was trying to meet up with me earlier. I said we'll do that another time. I didn't tell him my location. <laughs> I'm not trying to deal with that already. Moon Knight was bad. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Ben for real. Thank you. I ne- I, I think wait, that's three whoa. for real on TikTok. Whoa, bro. Ben, ben never you. said that. I never said that. <laughs> three yeah, for real. Three shout for out Ben TikTok. for we're, real. Yeah, we're mutuals. He gets it, bro. Moon Knight was garbage. Charlie makes this list and then says Moon Knight was bad. Cam, I only speak facts, brother. I don't know what else you want from me, man. Like, I I can't <laughs> I can't give it to you any any other way, bro. Like. Oh my gosh! You know, okay, just keep spewing out. I want to, I want to say something because we just talked about like communication and debate and everything. I agree with Charlie. I agree with Charlie that Charlie only spits facts because, of course, he spits exactly what he believes. So to him, it is facts. Mm. Just like I say, all I spit is facts. Of course, that's true for everybody. That's if you say you spit facts, unless you're just lying to yourself, then you do spit facts because I get what you're saying. Like it's a fact that I love mold. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get that. <clears throat> it's a fact for you. Object. It's subjective truth. Yeah, exactly. That's the best okay. way. Well, yeah, that'd be a fun episode. I think we'd have a lot, a lot, a lot to talk about. Um, if you have just now joined the live stream, um, feel free to rewind and watch our full draft. We had awesome dis- discussions. It was super fun. If you're listening on our audio and you want to see the actual list. Go to our TikTok or just come jump on the YouTube version and skip to the end. Um, that has been our Marvel movie draft. Another successful live stream. Tons of fun with these two these two guys. Uh, well, well, with Ben because, I mean, me, me and Charlie are always on here. So with, with Ben, it was tons of fun. Um, it was also fun with Charlie. So. Yeah, Ben that just is, made him so happy. I that think just made he, him yeah, so happy. You see, I, I saw he's that. No, it, okay, it, it made me happy because I started laughing because I saw your reaction. I knew that you had just read it and you started. <laughs> I started shaking my head. I was like, God damn it! I think that's true though. He, I think I did just get a comment that said two though. So w. you already made it? No, no, I just got oh, a yeah. no, no for for this, uh, not for this one, for the last one. Ooh, shout out Troyer W Words from the Nerds episode. Yeah, if you want to listen to our old stuff, feel free. All the episodes are on here, video version. Um, if you would rather listen to audio, just go to your podcast app and type in Words from the Nerds podcast. And if you click the link here in the bio, you'll find Ben's socials. He also runs a podcast that me and Charlie have been on recently, uh, Cinematic Dissection, where we talk about a lot of movies. Ben talks about a lot of movies. I'm always I'm always on there when I can be, so... Yeah, tons of fun. Another awesome live stream. Uh, let us know on our TikToks what list you think was better. And yeah. You're going to post it right away. Yeah. Your viewing pleasure. Charlie, anything you want to plug? Uh, follow me on TikTok uh, at It's Cubson. Follow me on Twitch, uh, Cubson. Uh, or sorry, It's Cubson on Twitch as well. Excuse me. Uh, and then uh, subscribe on YouTube, Cubson. I'm gonna hop on mine. I haven't even started on the server yet, bro. I'll make a base right I'll on spawn. There. That's how ballsy <laughs> I am. You got me tripping. Ben, why don't you let us know what you're doing these days? I'm doing everything, man. I'm a professional Minecrafter. I am <laughs> a Rubik's that? Cube solver, chess player on the side, professional <laughs> debater. You know how it is. No, I, I'm on a 
I'm on Spotify podcast, like Aiden mentioned, had these guys on recently, lots of fun episodes that I want to do with them in the future as well. And I'll be on more live streams like this, hoping to get into more controversy. I would love to get canceled <laughs> at one point. That's kind of like <laughs> a bucket list of mine to get canceled. <laughs> and on TikTok, of course I'm on TikTok. We're about to post post our videos on on these lists that we just made and see if I can take another W just like I will in Minecraft, just like I will in Among Us. I haven't taken an L yet, so uh, we'll have to see what happens. Minecraft, that's going to change. I'm just letting you know. Letting you know that 100%. Okay. 100%. We'll see. We'll see. All righty. And so that does it for episode 24, our Marvel movie draft. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around. Thank you, Troyer. Thank you, Will, Cam, Ben Friel. Thank you for joining. Um, NLE Memish, if you ever hear this, thank you uh for listening uh 513 io shout out tons of awesome people especially um you know champ and some of the people that were here earlier that um dipped off yeah it was tons of fun dobin also so yeah and if you want to catch some more of these live streams just hop over to the youtube um thanks for listening to my marvel hot takes yeah for sure will (laughs) um yeah hop over to the youtube um Double check the TikTok. I'll usually post before we go live. And yeah, we will see y'all in the next episode. Peace. Adios. Sayonara.